Here we thank ZJ for handing out the Gemaras. And we're going to continue with our Mesechus Tamid. We're learning Mesechus Tamid together. We're gearing up for God willing to see him next Shabbos. So we're going to continue where if you're using the front, we're using the standard art scroll. So in the front, it'll be Lamed Beis Amid Aleph. It'll be about 10 lines from the bottom. And Lamed Beis Amid Aleph. If you're using the back, again, don't go too far in the back because you don't want to go to Mesechus Midos. But in Tamid in the back, it'll be 32A3. Also about 10 lines from the bottom, or maybe 15. So again, it's Lamed Beis Amid Aleph in the front, 32A3 in the back. And we were in the middle of an Agatha section dealing with uh, Alexander the Great, asking a whole bunch of philosophical questions to the Chachamim. And we said, this really can't be taken all on a literal level, as with many Agatha Gemaras. Many of the Mepharshim say there's deeper meanings to all this. We're just not going to have time to go into all those. So let's continue where we're up to. Amar Lahan. So this is after he's very happy with how the Chachamim have given him very wise answers. He's given them clothes of royalty to wear. So Amar Lahan. So Alexander now says to the Chachamim, Medinas Afriki. I wish to go to Africa. He wanted, according to many of the commentators, he wanted to wage war, expand the empire, and uh, conquer some more over there, maybe exploit some of the resources they had. So his question was, how do I proceed? So I'm relay, they say back to him, the Paske are So I'm sorry, you're not going to succeed. It's not going to be a successful journey to get there. Why? The Paske are because you've got mountains of darkness that are in your way. Gesundheit. The Mephorshim talk about what that means. Does that mean literally there are mountains of darkness? Or again, or is this a metaphor for something much deeper? That's probably the way most of the Mephorshim go. So they advise him against this trip, this excursion to Africa. Amar Lani says to them, it's not acceptable for me uh, not to go because I'm supposed to be the ruler of the world. I've got to go there and do my business, conquer and exploit the resources. That's why I'm asking you. I'm trying to ask you, what, how do I pull this off? So Elamai Evans, so what should I do? And if I want to succeed, you're telling me I've got to watch out for these mountains of darkness. What do I do if I want to succeed? Again, this has to be taken on a, a metaphoric level because this can't just be simple reading what they advise him here. I'm relay, they tell him, okay, if you want to succeed, this is how to pull it off. I say, Hamri Lubai de Proshe Bahabra. Bring along Libyan donkeys. Why? Because they are used to traveling in darkness. In other words, you're going in this through, you've got to pass through this mountain of darkness to get there. You've got to use a type of vehicle. You've got to use a type of donkey that's suited to travel in this, in this, whatever this darkness means. And they suggest these Libyan donkeys because they are able to get the job done traveling in darkness. And he continues and he say, there's a couple more pieces of advice we got for you. Bring along <coughs> big spools of, of cord, rope, massive rope, because again, you're going to be traveling at, in darkness. So you got to be very careful not to lose your way. Tie one end of that rope something on this side before the mountains of darkness, so it'll be fastened. And as you go with these Libyan donkeys, you'll extend that rope, fasten it to the end, and when you need to come back, you'll just hold on to that rope to get make it back out of that darkness area. The Chiasis Nictus Begavayos, so when you come back, you'll be able to hold on to this rope and you'll make it back through this darkness. Again, however this is to be understood. Vasis Liasrach, and then you'll be able to return to where you left from. So Alexander followed their advice and he did everything they suggested using the Libyan donkeys, tying the rope, as they said. And when he gets to Africa, he reaches a place where every, all the inhabitants are women. Imagine like all these women warriors. This is something like out of a comic book or something. But, but this is, again, I don't know if this is meant to be taken literally. Again, most of the Farshim say there's more going on here. So he wants to do battle. He wants to conquer. And he's going up against all of this, this army of women. So Amrile, these women were very intelligent. And they say to Alexander, you're, either any way you go, you're going to be the loser here. Because they say, if you fight with us, and if you succeed and you kill us, Yomru, everyone's going to say about you, your name is going to go down in history. Look at what kind of a person you are. You went around slaying women. 
but if you do battle with us and we win, we kill you, what's everyone going to say? Yomru Malka de Katlunashi. Wow, what a loser that Alexander was. He went to war against an army of women and he lost. So it's you're darned if you do, darned if you don't. You're, 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 there's just no because it's, it's not going to go well for you. There's a very similar Gemara elsewhere, also involving Alexander, that it talks about the, the Mitzrayim. The Egyptians came to him at some point, I believe it's in Sanhedrin, that they came to him in like a court of law and said that they had a complaint against the Jews, that when we left Egypt, we plundered them, took all their gold and silver. And now it's all these years later, we want it back. And the Chachamim were wondering, how do we respond? And there was one Jew who raises his he says, let me go. I've got a good complaint. And this it's good to let me go. Because if I lose, then everyone's going to say, okay, shkoch, we didn't send our big hitter. We sent this, this nameless person. And if I win, it'll be a big shemach for Israel that this nameless person won. It's a very similar argument. He actually had a good uh, point. Because the Gemara says, he says to the Egyptians in the court, he says, no, so tell me, what, where do you get this idea from that we left with your money? And they say, it says it in your Torah. So he says, oh, you look into the Torah. That same Torah says that you enslaved us for all those hundreds of years. Uh, we'd like reparations. At which point the Egyptians say, okay, let's have some time to think about it. We'll get back to you. They never got back to him. So he, he bested them that way. But it's a very similar point. That they also involving Alexander. So this is what the women say to him, is that you're darned if you do, darned if you don't. It's best that you just walk away. So the Gemara continues, Omer Lahan. So Alexander says to them, well, that was a, he accepts their argument. That's a really good point. It's not going to pay to go fight them. So he says to them, Aislunama. So can I have something to eat? Can you bring me some bread to eat? Aislunama de Dahava, a pus, a pusura de Dahava. So they brought him bread that was made of gold or it had gold in it, and they served it to him on a table of gold. Amrar Lu says to the women, We now turn the page. We're on Lamed Bez, Lamed Bez, if you're in the front, if you're in the back, 32B1. So Amar Louis says to the women, have you ever heard of such a thing that people eat bread that's made of gold? Amar Lady say to him, if you just wanted regular gold, regular bread rather, you don't have enough bread in your homeland? You have to come here from Greece to come eat bread? Obviously you're coming here, you want something else, we're serving you gold. The shakla you packed up and you came here, you have bread back home, you didn't come here for bread, so you want gold. So So when he was leaving, I guess he took care of whatever business he needed to take care of in Africa. And when he was leaving, he inscribed on the gates of the city, Anna Alexandra Smokton, I am Alexander of Macedonia. When I came here, I was a fool. Until I came to this place in Africa where the women were the ones in charge and they were the ones who, who really put me in my place. The Elaf ate some in the Shaya, and I finally learned how to be a bar seichel, how to have good reasoning. I learned it from the women. So that's this incident. Again, the commentaries go on to say there are much deeper levels that, uh, uh, how to understand this than just the, the plain reading. The Gemara continues, Kishakov Ase was returning back to go to, to Greece, to, to Macedonia. So it says, Yosef Ahumayana, he sat down by a certain spring because it was time to eat, and that, that's fresh water coming out of the spring. The Achel Nama, he was eating his bread. Havu biyadei kuldinei demilcha. And he also had with him some salted fish, some really salty sardines. They're obviously dead, and they were like preserved in their brine. And that's what he's got with him. So it says, Bahadi de mechavrei luhu. And he washed them off. I guess there was a lot of brine on them. So he must have dunked them in the spring to wash off some of the brine that was on those salty fish. And in the process of doing that, a ruach, some kind of spirit of life, returned to these fish, these fish which had been dead, that were in the seasoned sardine can. Nonetheless, when he washes them off in this special spring, all of a sudden it seems like there's trias emesim, they come back to life. So Amar, so Alexander remarks when he saw this, Shma mina, hai ayana, mi and I'll say, it must be, that what could give this kind of power that the spring is bringing life to the fish, this must be coming from Gan Eden, where there's the Eight Sachayim and Gan Eden, the tree of life. And somehow or another, it's, it's magic is in this water. And that's what brought these fish back to life. I've got to go investigate this. So it says, Ikadamri, some say, Shoko Mahanumaya, some say he took some of the water, Turbape, and he splashed it on his face because he wanted to 
rejuvenate himself and, and to bring some of that ruach into himself. Ikadamri and others say that what did he do? Idli kule, he traced back, he walks along the water to try to get back to its source. Until he got to the entrance of Gan Eden, where Adam and Chav had been kicked out of, and there was those Malachim who were left there guarding it. Ramakole raises his voice and he says, Let me in. Pischuli Baba, open the gates for me. Amrule, so those angels who are guarding the gates, they say to him, No. This is the gate that it's God's gate, and only someone who's a real tzaddik is allowed to come through here. Amrullah, he says to those angels, Ananami, you go, what am I? I'm, what am I, chop liver? I'm, I'm a ruler of the world here. He says, Malka, no. He says, I, I'm a ruler of the world, so I should be allowed in. I'm important. So, so there he says, if you're not going to let me in, at least give me something as a, as a souvenir that I made here. I want a tchotchke that says I made it to the gates of Gan Eden. I want something, a t-shirt, something to, to, to bring back. So, Yavile Gulgalta Chada. So these angels, they gave him back uh, an orb, some kind of circular matter. The Farshim say it, would, it basically looked like an eyeball. Asya, when Alexander brought it back to his home, it says, Takle lekule dava kaspa bahade. He put it on a scale, and on the other end of the scale, he put all sorts of gold and silver. And what happened? Lohave maskale. The orb wasn't outweighed meaning no matter how much gold and silver he put on the other side of the scale, the orb this, that looked like an eyeball weighed more. So Amar Lo and the he calls in the rabbis again, and he says, you got to explain this to me. Explain what happened, that I was in Africa. I think I found the source of Gan Eden. The, the Malachim, they gave me this, this orb, and it looks like an eyeball. And no matter how much weight I put on the scale of gold and silver, the eye outweighs it. So how, we are, how am I supposed to understand this? My high, what's going on here? So Amrei Kulgalta Deina De Bisra Dama. So they say to him that it's very obvious to us what's going on here. This orb is meant to resemble a human eyeball. And what is it saying? Delo Kasava. It'll never be satisfied. So they're saying they were giving you Musr, those angels. They gave you an eyeball, and they say the world's not enough for you. You've conquered the known world, you've got all the riches and everything, and you're still looking for more. Start being happy with what you have already. That's the message. Because look at this. You got this eyeball on the scale and no gold and silver. Everything you got in your treasury won't outweigh it. It's never going to be enough. So, so he says to him, um, so Omar Lu, so Alexander says to them, okay, me my you. How do you know that that's the case? How do I know that's the message? Maybe there's something else going on there. So the Rabban and Chazal say back to him, Shkol Klilei Apra Vachisya. Take a bit of dirt and put it on this orb and cover it. Alter takal. So what happened? It'll be outweighed immediately. Meaning, as soon as you put dirt on that eye, which symbolizes death, that what happens when a person is buried? That's when their desires for kesef and zav for gold and silver dissipates because now that's not important to them anymore. They're going into olam amas. So once you put some dirt on it, then you'll see. Then it'll have its real weight. It won't be. It won't outweigh gold and silver anymore. Because it says in Mishle that the grave, again, they're never going to be satiated. But once someone dies, that's when they lose all that desire. So that's what they were telling. They were telling him that's the message. As long as you're looking for more, that expression, someone who loves silver will never be satisfied by silver. Their appetite will never be filled. Let's just finish this. It says, once they mentioned this idea of the, the, the mountains of darkness, so Elio taught in his yeshiva, Gehenim Lamalam in Rakia. Now, where is this Gehenim, this idea where, where souls will go if they need some kind of refinement and they're not yet ready to go into Gan Eden? So it's above the heavens. The Yeshorim, some say Lachari Hari Koshech, and some say it's beyond these mountains of darkness that Alexander uh, experienced. So now the Gemara says something a little bit related. Tanar of Echia, so Echia taught Kalosik Tarabalaila. So here's a positive note to end on. So we're talking about darkness and night. So he says, whoever learns Torah at night, so he says, Shechina Kenegdo. You should know that they have a special opportunity. We're closer to the Shechina when we learn Torah at night. Shenemar, because it says, So it says that again, wake up at night with Rosh Hashmuros and engage in Torah study. And then it says, pour out your, your tears. Uh, like water, and then you'll be close to the face of God. So that implies someone who's up at night learning, they're close to the Shekhinah. 
So now the Gemara ends as follows. And by the way, when we end this, this is the end of the Gemara and Tamid. From the rest, from this point on, it's just Mishnayos. So how does it end with a very famous saying? We say it every Friday night. Amar of Elazar ben Azariah, Hamine Chachamim Marbim Sholem Ba'olam, that, that uh, scholars, those who study Torah, they bring more peace into the world. Shememar, Bechol Benayich, Lemude Hashem, Verav Sholem Banayich. That it says, literally, it will mean all your sons will be disciples of Hashem, and abundant is the peace to your sons. Altikri Banayich el Bonayich. Don't read it, your sons, but rather Bonayich, the builders, meaning those who are engaged in building the great Torah and stuff, they're the ones who are bringing uh, shalom, they're bringing uh, peace, to this, peace to this world. So the, the more Torah we imbibe, uh, we more potential we have to bring shalom. And of course, that can be misused and abused sometimes, but this is talking about people who really are, are learning Lashmad, working on their midos, they have the opportunity to bring more shalom to this world. All right, we'll hold it here, and God willing, we will continue next week. Amen.